3D printing technology is getting good fast. And while trying to make a completely different video about 3D printing and assembling and painting this awesome Spider-Man 2099 mask, I started to ask myself, do I even need to paint this thing? Let's talk about it. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Frank and this video took a left turn. Now, initially I was just making a tutorial on how to build this awesome mask that DO3D had released and it's white and red. And if you guys haven't noticed, I'm kind of a sucker for those types of things. But I started to realize through the printing process, I don't even know if I need to paint this thing. I had started getting results off of my 3D printer that I had never really seen before. And like, what do you do with that? Now, if you're here because you wanna learn how to make this mask and the settings to print it and orientation and how I added the magnets and all of that stuff, this is still the video for you. I'm gonna take you through that whole process. However, the main goal of this video is to see if I can print one of these Spider-Man helmets so good that I don't need to paint it. But don't worry, we're still gonna paint and finish one. I wanna compare the two at the end to see if the time and effort that I spent sanding and priming and painting and doing all this stuff was really worth it when you can kind of just raw print it to look like this. And I'm gonna show you how to do this, so don't worry. And for that, let's do one of these. Okay, how did that work? Did it, okay, cool, we're in the garage now, look at that. So for this project, we're gonna be using mostly three printers. The main two though are gonna be the Bamboo P1P and the Creality K1 Max. It's, it's, it's down here, see it, the P1P Max? Anyway, these are two very large 3D printers. Now, the smaller one of the two is the Bamboo P1P. However, it is just large enough to fit form-fitting helmets. And what I mean by that is this isn't some uh, crazy protruding uh, Iron Man helmet or a Master Chief helmet or something like that. It's meant to hug your head. This is a Red Hood helmet. It fits perfectly on the P1P. The Spider-Man helmet fits too. Now, the new Creality K1 Max, I haven't really featured this in a video yet because I just unboxed it recently, but I have been putting this thing to work. It is 300 by 300 by 300, and it is really a good competition for larger high-speed 3D printers, and I'm really hoping Bamboo responds and makes something that's this size because the P1P is like in a weird spot between the K1 and the K1 Max, but don't worry about that. So let's get back to the computer and look at the files and start slicing them and seeing what kind of settings and times we're looking at. Hey, we're back inside and I'm wearing pink now. Definitely not because I messed up recording on the computer yesterday while doing all the slicing. That, that would never happen. Who would do something like that? Yeah, anyway, first thing we're gonna do is actually get our hands on the 3D file, as always. We're gonna head over to Do3D, or Do3D if you're nasty. You can see the awesome 2099 file here. It's gonna give you the textured and the non-textured version in a couple different iframes. It's 30 bucks. If you wanna save some money on it, you can use my discount code FBT20. That'll help you out, but if you wanna save even more money, there is a free version. It is the PS5 2099 version, which looks pretty similar, but it is a smooth version, so to each his own, we're pretty much gonna print the helmets the same way. Now, once you have that file, what I like to do is drop it in the mesh mixer and use my 3D head scan to make sure it's scaled properly. Now, if you wanna learn how to perfectly scale 3D helmets, go check out that video. It's one of these, I forget the corner. Anyway, go check out that video. It'll teach you how to properly scale helmets. Even if you don't have a 3D scanner, it will help. So yeah, this is a 100% scale DO 3D helmet. They pretty much fit my head perfectly. Uh, whatever scale they use or reference, it, it, it's great. I love it. Um, so I know this is gonna fit. Now we're gonna talk about the slicing programs. Now, I'm not gonna harp too much on settings. I go over it in every video and I talk about this and that and I just, I beat it to death. The 3D printing programs carry a lot of the workload now. Creality Print, Bamboo Slicer, Orca Slicer, Prusa Slicer, they're so dialed in now you really don't need to adjust anything. You really just need to work on positioning your model, figuring out the quality you wanna print it at, making sure it's supported properly in preview, and uh, then kind of just hitting print. So for the Bamboo P1P, we're going to be using Bamboo Slicer, which can be a little bit of an intimidating um, slicing program. Uh, if you've never 3D printed before, there are a lot of extra settings once you go into advanced. But really, we're just gonna pick our quality. I'm gonna drop it down from a standard 0.2 to a sta uh, 1.6. Um, strength, uh, 10 to 15% infill, it's fine for helmets. You can change the infill pattern if you want. It really doesn't make that big of a difference. It's a helmet. Speeds, I'm not adjusting speeds. I'm letting it print at the 200 and 300 millimeters a second it always does. The things we're gonna really wanna worry about is supports. Now, you can let it auto-generate supports. That's totally fine. We're gonna wanna block out that inner ring because you don't need that to print helmets most of the time. So we're gonna select the helmet. We're gonna go over here to support painting. We're gonna increase the brush size a lot, and then we're gonna look inside this helmet. We're gonna use the uh, right mouse click to red out this entire area inside here. 
because we don't need to support it. And then let's just slice this and see what kind of times we're looking at. 21 hours for a higher quality printed helmet. That's insane. It would take three to four days on standard printers if you want any type of smooth quality out of it. And because we blocked out that inner support, now we don't have to worry about using or wasting a lot of filament in there. Now you can flip between tree supports and normal supports. I'm not gonna get into the pros and cons. Whatever support system you wanna use for your prints, if it gets you the print at the end of the day, who cares? I am so sick of seeing people post on Facebook, oh, I printed this, well, why didn't you use tree supports? Tree supports are better. No, they're not. They're better in certain situations. That's not a one size fits all, so stop it. Anyway, the most important part of this is going down to your first couple layers and making sure your print's gonna survive. We have a really good base here for the jaw, and as it builds up, it's nice and supported. We're gonna get some islands over by the ear section. You can see them right there. And I'm gonna zoom in on them and make sure that they're properly supported, and it looks like they have really good collision and interface, and then they meet up with the rest of the jaw, and then it kind of just builds up from there. Reviewing your prints can really, really help you catch a potential failure that was staring you right in the face. It goes around, connects, and then it builds up from there. I'm happy with that. Bamboo Slicer is beautifully optimized. You can definitely shave time off by blocking out more supports and readjusting, and that's totally up to you. I'm okay with a 22-hour Spider-Man helmet. Next up is Creality Print. Now, I am gonna say right off the bat, this program needs work. Um, it does not like using tree supports with complex models. I was not able to get tree supports to work with the textured version of this helmet. I had to resort to standard supports, which again, is totally fine but I ended up having to use custom supports at one point because the program just kept crashing. But when it does generate the supports and they do actually print, they print beautifully and they break off perfectly. I'm pretty sure because Creality stole this program from Bamboo who stole it from Prusa, but that's for another video. Because we're printing this on the K1 Max, we can actually play around with the helmet position a little bit more where in Bam the, on the P1P, it, it, the print bed's just too small. So we can definitely lay this back a little bit more and get it a little bit flatter and then we're just gonna rotate it at a 45 and look at that, way more stable. We're just gonna do a normal quality on this. Infill again, 10 to 15% is totally fine. I'm not messing with speed. Definitely enable support. Um, your support over an angle, you can change that to like 65 or 70. It's not the end of the world. If you wanna save mat uh, more material, your support density, you can drop that down to like 5%. It'll make your supports a little more flimsy, but they'll break off a little easier and it'll, sa it'll save you material. Um, I'm actually gonna keep that at a 10. Material, that just depends on what you're printing with. Bill plate adhesion, use a raft, use a brim, whatever floats your boat. Now, because this is the textured version, it is going to try to put supports everywhere. Every little spot inside this helmet, all the little hexagons, you can see where it's already thinking about putting supports. So what I would very much recommend when dealing with the texture version in both bamboo and Creality print or whatever slice you're using, just add custom supports. For a helmet this simple, you're only gonna need the support around the entire brim and around the eyes. That's what I'm about to go do because I know it works and I know it survives and I'm not about to let it generate supports in between every single one of these little textured hexagons. No thanks. Does it take a couple minutes to do? Yeah. Is it worth doing right one time? Mm, yeah. I know this is nice and supported. We're gonna check the preview anyway, but I'm happy with how this looks. Let's hit slice. Okay, and there we go. The textured version on the K1 Max is gonna take 23 hours, still less than a day for a full size, high detailed textured helmet. Blocked out the inner supports, again, the same way. We're gonna check that first initial little bit. You can see the jaws starting in a different place. It starts on the cheeks. It quickly meets up with itself. It builds up, the ears build up, they have really good support. It connects, and then we get the rest of the helmet. That's amazing, I can't ask for anything better. If you can position and slice the full helmet, I have no doubts you guys will be able to position the back plate. That prints just fine. And then what I would recommend for the eye frames is just stand them up, put them as close together as possible, and print them rather slow because they are spiky and you want those points to come out really nice. Oh, um, D Danny's calling me in the middle of recording a video. Hi, Danny, how are you? Oh, <laughs> I have a fantastic time with you. Subscribe to CTK Creative. <laughs> Okay, you're on speaker. You're on speaker. I need, I, I need the evidence out there uh, that I'm going to congratulate you on an early 1 million subscribers because I'm pretty sure you're, what, like 10K away? So congratulations. Uh, yeah, all right. Thank you. I I'm love the that. first one now that's out there if the evidence is there. No one can deny me my right. 
Maybe I won't. <laughs> maybe maybe I'll maybe I'll delete all that blackmail I have on you and not cancel you. Aw, you're so sweet. I do what I, I do what I can. I'm just kidding. I'm not deleting any of that blackmail. So let's get these started on the printers. And guys, I will tell you right off the bat, I think I got some of the best time lapse footage. I've ever got of these things actually printing on the K1 and Bamboo P1P. So enjoy this nice little time lapse montage, and I'll see you in the garage. Wait, 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 that's not a time lapse. Why did it print a shark? The heck? Oh, that's not a normal shark. That's a surf shark, the sponsor of today's video. <laughs> oh, that was a bad transition. Anyway, what is Surfshark VPN? Well, to put it simply, Surfshark VPN is a virtual private network that helps you hide your identity online like you're wearing a mask. But not only that, it allows you to virtually swap your locations so your phone thinks you're somewhere completely different. Like I could be over here all the way in America and then suddenly it's like I'm all the way over here in Japan. Now, I'm not here to try to scare you guys at all, but unfortunately there are people out there who are trying to steal your information. And one of the easiest ways for them to do it is through your phone. If you've ever been out and about using any type of public Wi-Fi, like a McDonald's or a hotel or even an airport, that is an absolute gold mine for people to steal your data. So using a VPN to encrypt your data prevents any of these people from getting access to your information when you're just trying to enjoy a vacation or something. Aside from all the security, the other nice benefit of having a VPN is, well, now you can move that virtual IP address to anywhere in the world. So say you're traveling abroad, you're somewhere in Europe, but you wanna watch a show that's premiering back on American Netflix, well, you can just use the VPN to switch back to an American IP address and you can watch all your shows. But Surfshark offers more than just an online mask and the ability to go to any country virtually. You're gonna get alerts for any potential data breaches or leaks of your personal information online. So if any of this sounds good to you guys, use this code right here and the link down below to get three free extra months of Surfshark VPN. They also offer a 30 day money back guarantee, so it's kind of risk free to try it out. Oh, and probably the best part, you can use one account across multiple devices. So you don't need to make a bunch of different accounts and that's just gonna get all messy and confusing. So thank you again Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video and guys, don't forget to check out the link. Let's get back to the video. So as you guys can see, I've been a little busy printing helmets and testing different filaments and moving them around the printers and just seeing what kind of quality I can get off of these things. Um, the most recent two additions are the textured red version that I showed you in that previous, you know, support removal time lapse. This thing looks incredible. Look, look at this. This is gorgeous. Plus this matte black one that it's uh, fairly new. I did scuff it quite a bit while removing the supports and if I wasn't planning on, I don't know, painting them maybe eventually. Um, this is so smooth and warning about matte filaments, they're meant to make stuff look smoother. Um, if I was to go and sand this or hit it with a coat of primer, you can feel the layer lines, but because it's not glossy and reflective, it's not, it, the light's not catching all of those angles. So it absolutely looks great. Um, this, this, uh, this red is also like semi-gloss. This one's not too bad either. And the iframes kind of 
I don't know, they kind of hide the imperfections on the red. So it's really gonna depend on what type of filament you're using too. And different printers make different filament, different colors. Like the blacks will kind of turn different shades depending on the temperatures and all of that. But they're all coming out incredible. I, I mean, especially these textured versions. Um, I, the last thing I'm gonna do, and it's not gonna make this video, is I'm gonna print a black textured version because that's just gonna look wicked. So keep an eye out for that on Instagram. Um, but like these are gorgeous. Uh, next, I wanna talk about the eye, um, the eye frames, these spiky things. Now I printed a couple different ones and I've been playing around with different colors, but cleaning them up and depending on however you print them, I've been printing these on my Elegoo Neptune 4 because why not, the printer's available. Um, they're coming out pretty decent, Oop, caught it. And there's just a little bit of cleanup. I've been using some silk filament, some silk red, because it really looks great on these helmets, especially if you're not gonna be painting them. But just to clean up the edges, super easy little trick I do. Come here, nah. Super easy little trick I do on most of my prints is I just use my soldering iron. The same thing I use to PLA weld. I'll just go around the edges where the supports were and I'll just smooth them down. I mean, you can use a razor, a deburring tool, whatever you want, but I find this is just, one of the quickest, easiest ways. You can pretty much just take any stringing and just like swipe it away, which is great. You can re-level surfaces and smooth it. Um, so I'm just gonna do this to a couple of the frames and then we're gonna start throwing them on the helmets and seeing how they look. How about that? All right, I went through, I cleaned up a bunch of the frames. They look way better and sharper now. And let's work on attaching them. Now, I, after this video, I'm gonna probably wanna sit here and clean them up even more, but I wanna see what some of these color combos look like. So I'm just gonna use some double stick tape and just, just throw them on. So yeah, let's do that. These look kinda cool. Um, now that I'm looking at, now that I'm looking at this red one with the black lenses or the black frames, I wanna put black eyes in this instead of red. Yeah. We're gonna do that later, but I think that'll look cooler than it all being red. Hmm. Okay, so while we're letting more of these helmets print across the different printers, I wanna talk about the eyes now. This kind of kicked my butt. I was trying to print the mesh version, and I think they were just a little bit too complex. Um, or maybe I was printing them too fast for the K1 or P1P. They were just coming out stringy. It, it could have been a multitude of things. I could have been rushing. The filament could have had some moisture in it. I just could have been positioning them kind of weird. So I was about to give up on these and I asked Instagram for some different recommendations on what to do. I had thought of this white mesh screen. The holes are a little bit big in it, but honestly, they turned out decently, um, decently well for iframes. I think if you layered them up or you wanted the best visibility, these are gonna definitely do it. Um, I, I'm, I, don't, I don't hate them. But all of the Spider-Man cosplayers came in clutch. This is PC mesh, uh, PC fan mesh. And this stuff, this stuff is great. Look at that. It's a little metal screen mesh that you can cut to any shape you want. And this is what a lot of uh, Spider-Man cosplayers use for the eyes and it's great. So let me get some of this fit into the helmets and we'll just kind of look at, well, we'll see how it looks. Okay, so that works really well. This is actually really cool stuff. Um, my only gripe with it right off the bat is that obviously the color doesn't match perfectly if I'm trying to do something like a raw print. From a distance, I don't think anybody would care. Uh, this helmet's pretty much almost done. Um, but when you start getting into other colors, when it's against a, a harshly different color, um, you can definitely tell that the red and the two whites are clearly different. Um, but you can paint this. I know plenty of them actually just spray paint over it and call it a day. So if I was going to be painting these helmets, if I painted this one red and I wanted the red eyes, well, I would just paint the mesh screen the same color red. So it's very easy to uh, go ahead and change the color of these, but that works beautifully. Now, while I said all of that and I was having trouble getting the frames printed, eventually I was able to dial in my SVO1 Pro and actually get the frames to start printing beautifully. I know I could get them to print on the high speed printers. I'm not too worried about that, but for now, um, my SVO1 Pro just came in clutch. So now I have the proper color printed frames to put in these. This way it perfectly matches the filament and then I don't have to worry about it being any different colors. Okay, I threw a couple of the lenses in and honestly it doesn't make a huge difference. 
I think it looks best on the white helmets because you don't really you don't realize how many different shades of white there are until you start stacking them on top of each other. So I think the white definitely benefits the most from just blending in beautifully and just being the easier of the routes. You can de whatever. You can definitely tell on the red helmets which one is printed in the same color as the frame as opposed to the mesh. Um, the printed the printed LEDs looks way better. And the black helmets probably matter the least. Um, black seems to be black in this case. Uh, the printed frames versus the mesh, or the printed um, lenses versus the mesh lenses, they, they, there's really no big difference. Obviously you can see through them because I'm not wearing them and you know, there's no back plates to them. So I think the black matters the least in this case where um, probably the eyes on the red matter like the most. Now for the assembly of this thing, we're gonna be using just some standard neodymium magnets. I do not know what size these actually are. I think DO3D says it on the print or something like that. I just have a lot of magnets. Now, a lot of these can be pressure fit because of just the accuracy of these printers. So half the time, you can just force the magnets in, in there and sometimes they'll stay, sometimes they won't. Like this one's in there pretty good, but if I hit it with another magnet, it'll pop back out. Now you can put some super glue in there, but what I've started doing is I'll push the magnet into the socket and then I'll take a soldering iron and you have to be super careful with this because if the magnet sticks to the soldering iron, you're gonna ruin the magnet. It's gonna overheat and it's gonna lose its magnetism. I think it's 70 degrees Celsius and you'll actually kill the magnet. So be very careful, wear gloves, Do use a piece of plastic, use something that isn't magnetic and you're gonna hold the magnet in place and collapse the walls of the print around it. I'm basically making very small little tabs so the magnet can't pop out. And you also have to be careful like where you do this or else you're gonna see where you just melted. But I'm basically forcing the magnets to stay in there forever by collapsing the wall around it. Or you can ditch all of that and you can super glue the parts together. You can use double stick tape, whatever your flavor. Now let's get the magnets into the iframes. All done. Oh yeah, remember how I said I was gonna be painting one of the masks to see if it would come out any better than just the raw print? Well, I went and did that too while filming this entire video. I started off by taking the textured version and I hit it with just some 220 grit sandpaper. Obviously, I'm not trying to sand down all of the cool texture and bumps. I'm just scuffing it up a little bit to make sure that the paint's gonna adhere properly. After that, I took some white sandable duplicolor primer and just did a light dusting on top of it just to give the paint something to adhere to better than the raw plastic. After that, I took a Rust-Oleum semi-gloss two-in-one paint primer. Um, this stuff goes on a lot denser and covers a lot better. So any weird discoloration on the helmet was quickly covered up by this. And it also brought it down to more of a matte finish. After I had given that good amount of time to dry, I ended up using a white pearl dupli color. And I had always planned on using this color because it's gorgeous and it goes really nicely over a white base coat. If you just try to do the helmet or any helmet in this color, it's not gonna show up. It's more of a top coat almost like a clear coat. While I was doing the helmet, I was also taking care of the eye frames. First, I sanded them down the exact same way. I got them primer white, but then I went with a Rust-Oleum gold because I always planned on using my Duplicolor Metal Cast Red. The same red that's on my Mark 85, I thought would be perfect for these eye frames and they benefit greatly from a metallic gold base coat. If you're gonna use Metal Cast, be careful. It acts a lot more like a clear coat. It's a top coat. You have to do very light coats and build it up over time. If you go on too heavy, it will run immediately and you'll have to sand everything back down. So here are the final results, guys. What do you think? Does the painted version look that much better to justify the work that went into it? And granted, it wasn't a lot. It wasn't a complex paint job. Or is the raw printed version just good enough? This was definitely a fun project that got out of hand real quick. I've had a lot of fun mixing and matching the colors and I am not done testing new and exciting filaments. I definitely want to look into some pearl white filaments and see what kind of results I can get with that. So I think that's pretty much going to be a wrap for this video, guys. I'm kind of happy it turned into a video where I was able to compare a raw printed helmet to a painted helmet. It's definitely not what I intended, but 3D printing technology is just advancing quicker and quicker every day. And cosplayers and prop makers and really anybody in the hobby just gets to reap those benefits. So please let me know down below what you thought of this video. Do you want to see more videos like this? Do you want to continue to see me just try to raw print more and more stuff, seeing the cooler and better results I can get from it? 
Also, if you're wondering what I'm gonna do with all of these extra Spider-Man helmets, I will be throwing them up on my Etsy. It, my shop's been closed for a little while just because I haven't had a lot of work going on, but now I'm gonna start putting stuff back into the shop and there will be new and exciting colors that weren't featured in this video on the shop, so stay tuned for that. Also, if you guys wanna come hang out with me and work on projects live and interact, Come check out my Twitch, it's a lot of fun, so head on over. I do wanna say one last big thank you to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video, and an even bigger one to all of you guys. Thank you so much for watching, you have a good day.